have taken it from you. Too fast. It's very important to take your food from your dogs in the case of Big Z. This is for aggression control. Pace, back in your box. Good boy, stay. Eat up. Good boy. You go, Pope. Okay. And that snow up there on the mountains is basically the reason this morning that I've got this possum on my head. Thank you, Tony, from Waikara Moana Hunters. The wasabi that I bought from Pure Wasabi in Christchurch is now starting to seed. That's great. And when these pods are really, really mature, I'll harvest the seed from them. And patrons, you can get that free from me. Very hard to grow, very rare, but you can grow them. These I grew from seed, from last year's seed. So you can do it, it can be done, but it takes a lot of work. Now you could be forgiven for thinking this was also wasabi. It's from the same family. It's an aqua vegetable like wasabi. It's actually watercress. And I'm seeding watercress myself too, and I've got these here growing in the nursery. Just as wasabi has got this white flower, so does watercress. Now look at it. It's abundant. I'm growing all this watercress in here, and I've got a wee fence to keep super ducky out. So it's a great plant, and it's got so much nutrition in it, I couldn't even begin to tell you what's in there. And you just pick the tops off like that and keep harvesting it. Mmm. I like to mix it up with a little bit of this. Italian parsley gives your mouth a sort of an explosion. <laughs> Delicious. Now, one of the problems that us gardeners face, and you guys know all about it, is slugs. I'm going to take you into my lettuce patch and show you what I've done. I've done what you said, but I've, I've tried something different too. I painstakingly put broken eggshell around each plant, and I found that it worked to a degree, but some plants still got bitten, like that one did. Use coffee grounds. The old claw bath is uh, it's a worm farm. So now you can see I've got coffee grounds around every lettuce in here. It took a while to do. Did this this morning, just finished it now. And the idea is that uh, the acid is very acidic in the coffee grounds. The, uh, the slugs, they hate it. So as you know, slugs don't only just uh, smash the leaves, they also smash the roots of the plant because they're under the ground. In fact, it, this is where most of them are is underneath the ground. And uh, when it rains, this uh, will leach through. And these plants can, can actually do quite well. And the worms love the coffee grounds. Combined with a net to keep the birds out, I should get a crop of these pretty good now, hopefully. Under this bag and this bag and this bag here is a whole lot of compost and worms. But to show you how much the worms love this stuff, look at this, if I lift it up, there'll be worms in between it. There you go. They crawl right up, they try to get the coffee, they can smell it. They come right up into here and they get into the bag and these bags actually end up having worms in them too. And that's our worm juice there. Morning Super Duck. There you go mate. There you go. You like a good pad, eh? Yes you do. It's time to clean the chicken house but they're all still sitting and lay. So I want to wait for them to come off. Did you give me an egg mate? Yeah? Good on you. One chicken egg. Yesterday Super Duck laid her first egg, she's done another one. And holy shit! Look at the size of that! Wow! So, I'll give you an idea. That's a, that's a chicken egg there. Now a duck egg is big and her duck egg yesterday was pretty big. It was, I thought it was bigger than usual, but look at the today. Look at the difference of that. Holy shit! That's just, that's just a huge egg. I mean look at it in my hand how big it is. It is massive. Super duck. <laughs> I can't believe that came out of your bum. She's sleeping under my truck with uh, her mate Ducky just down here. She's keeping her beak nice and warm because it's cold. Sticks it under her wing. G'day mate, how you doing eh? She's the biggest Pekin duck I've ever bred. I mean look at the size of her. She's massive. Normally Muscovies are much bigger than Pekins. You guys that have ducks will know that. But size wise, nah. Super duck's probably a, a good third bigger easily. She keeps on laying eggs that big, we're in business. Right now the warehouse has got this special 30% off on all their ceramic pots. Like these, it's just so cheap. And I bought this Hoss, the first frost at the mega store for $17. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful plant? These 
Don't need a lot of sunlight, so inside they're good. The skylight gives enough light to come through and what comes through my kitchen windows. While the coffee's percolating this morning, I want to show you what's in here. Wood ear mushroom. I hit the jackpot when I was out hunting the other day and I found probably about five kilogram of these guys. Some of them are a little bit old and past use by date. And I'll show you what I did with those. All the mushrooms that were just not really edible, like this one here, too thin, too old. And making this glorious stuff here, we're going to introduce that to logs as spawn and grow more water mushrooms. But the rest, really good. I went down to the coast, not far from here, and I went to some native bush, and I found a whole lot more. So what I've done is I've washed them all, and these ones here have been in for like five hours now, and they're just about ready, I think. They're in here at just uh, 90 degrees. Look at that there dried out woody mushrooms. This is the last lot I'm doing. 95 degrees and four minutes to go and the air fryer, how are they looking? They're probably done by now. And that's that's the last lot. Oh they're good. Oh the coffee's percolating. She's away. Okay we can turn that off. Calm down, calm down mate. Oh she's she's good, she's good. As you can see, I've got a whole jar already filled beside it. While the uh, coffee cools down, put these in. Beautiful. But what it does is dehydrates the entire mushroom, and then when you put this in boiling water for about 20 minutes, it completely hydrates up to a full-size mushroom again. There's probably about six to eight kg there, and it's gone right down to that size. She's good to go. Oh, a bit of spillage there, Clay. You could have done better, mate. No, no point crying over spilt coffee, eh? These things leak like a bitch anyway. Beautiful. Well, this is about as, uh, as good as it gets when you can't hunt. It's a uh, really good yarn. And my mate Richard Weir wrote this, uh, this new book. And he couldn't have uh, done it in a better time because while I can't hunt, I can sit back, drink a coffee... Oh, mate. I don't know where Chloe gets her coffee from. She's in Swart Cafe in Australia. I don't know where she gets it from, but it's just always so damn good. Well, I started reading, and I realised I was going to tear through the book so quickly because uh, they're little short stories, like each one's quite short, and um, they're really relatable for me. I'm not a particularly good reader. In fact, I'm a pretty uh, backward reader, really. And uh, but I've been ploughing through it, so what I've been doing is just limiting myself to one story a day, and I'm just about to kick into the uh, the price of diesel. I told you rat bags to stop sending me stuff. This is from Rose and Bruce Best. Let's crank it open and see what's inside. People are so amazing. I mean, just to wrap this up was a lot of work. They put that on it. They they had to give it their time, and then they had to go to the post office to post it. And really, oh jeez. That is frigging awesome. You guys are the best, honestly. The work, I know the work that goes into doing this stuff. I'm not very good at doing this stuff myself. I've got to try some. This is the uh, pickle veg. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I'm going to share all of these with Damo. Thank you, Jared Pierce. Jared Pierce is a bloke that has been so giving. Ooh, what have we got? What have we got? Oh, wow. Well. Maple liquid smoked. How about that? Oh. Ooh, that'd be good for... That'd be really, really good for, um, for a lot of things, actually. What would you use maple liquid smoked on? I bet it tastes good just by itself. Oh, I'm so tempted to open it, just have a wee taste, eh? He's even put tape around here so it didn't leak. The kitchen adventure. Man, I gourmet food. It says um, Nelson's, uh, Nelson Naturally. So maybe it's from Nelson. Oh, thank you. That's one. Oh, there's a cap in here. Hey, that's a cool cap, bro. Oh, 
because he hunts and he's got his own stuff. How does it how does it fit, uh, guys? Is it all right, mate? Oh yeah, this is his logo from this company. Look, we'll put that on the truck. Well, it's not a company; it's just something he created. And these are great, mate. Well done. That's his card there. And I don't know if I can show you. I guess I can show you your, your phone number and that because um, people might want to get the hat from you. So if they do, there you go. It's a bit of advertising for you, mate. Bloody brilliant. And we've got a we've got a shirt made up in here. <laughs> Check it out, Clay Tool Clay Tool Stories. The bullshit stops when the tailgate drops. That's out of what, one of my songs I've just done recently. Oh mate, you're a you're a freaking legend. And look, it's long sleeve for summer fishing to keep the uh, oh what a what a cracker, mate. And it's my size. Oh look at the back of it. It's got um, pine dog. Legends, that's a sight. Good on you, buddy. Now I believe that uh, Jared's in a wheelchair. I think he's one of the wheelchair hunters of the country. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jared. I don't know. Oh yeah, protein department. That's what it is. That's so cool. Okay, the old junkie jig uh, stick is gone because it was uh, getting a bit tattered in the end. So we replaced it with a that one there. Well, crispy stick is still hung out. It's amazing because it gets scratched above here, this truck. The old nifty boats has done its done its dash on the front of the truck too. Sorry about that, Scotty. It's always a bit dodgy putting them on. You don't want to get that bubble on there, do you? That looks cool. I like that. One black lamb out of all of those. And every time my dogs see it running around, they think it's a pig. Jody's heading away and Pace has made himself nice and comfortable. He's he's like he's staying here, mate. Come on. He's like, I'm going with Jody. I'm going hunting. <laughs> what are you doing there, Pace? Hey? Jeez, you're a bloody slut. Go with anybody. Come on. <laughs> Come I'm on. your master. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You can't be in there. He you knows you're know. going on a mission, man. He can tell, eh? <laughs> hey? He's like, he goes, all I'm doing is going to be shooting rabbits on the farm. It's boring. He loves you. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> All right, bro, I'll let you carry on, mate. All right. See you later, buddy. I'll see you next but, time. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Good to see you. It's been great. Yeah, it's been cool. Make it happen again soon, yeah? All right. Because I need a good runner that I can trust. <laughs> Everybody else has been letting me down. <laughs> oh, look, old Pace, he wants to go. <laughs> you can't go, mate. Jeez, he wants to go with you, doesn't he? Can you feel it? Pace, you're not going. Pace, come. He's going to put white here all over you, mate. Come on, out of here, Pace. Pace, come. Stay here, Pace. Good boy. Stay with me. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> hey, mate. I'll see you later. See you later, mate. Yep. Go safe. I will. You too. Okay, cheery. This is uh, where Clint's making our new studio. And down here, you can see the mum going up the drain. There she goes. She's just gone up there now. She started off with about 20 babies. And now she's got three. That's all she's got left. They're not good at looking after their babies, and that's about as much as she's going to raise. Some mean sounds coming out of Clint's uh, business next door here. Sounds like a bit of a rave going on on there, Clint, hey? And now she's back out on the road again. This is what she does. And she wonders why she loses her babies. We just scared her back into here. Yep. Not really uh, great. Her baby's picking something up. They don't understand about traffic. Normally this road would have a lot more traffic, but it's closed off at one end. Pukeko. They're in abundance in New Zealand. They're just baby ones there. And they have this tendency to cross the road a lot. Just sitting here in the car. I'll zoom out so you can see what I mean. Right here. It's my house just up in here. They've come out of my paddock. And there's water down here so they go along here. But of course you've got cars coming along and they don't uh, care about going on the road cars come along and they get squashed regularly. Here comes a car now. Their babies might not even make it. it. Happens all the time. Mum and Dad on the road. Car come along, could be Damo even. 
and the babies are wise, they've gone back across the road. Yeah, it's got through. It's Damo! How you going, bro? I was just filming those Pukekau on the other side of the road saying they live dangerously, you know. She was running around the bush about two days ago. <laughs> this little wanker here caught it, didn't ya? What's that, mate? And this little wanker ate it. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. You enjoying it? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, nice bit of sour. She was a blue sour. Yeah. And Pace caught it by himself then. Uh, Good boy. The other dogs, actually the only other dog got there was uh, Poe. Smells divine, mate. The old cheap warehouse smoker. Bloody good, we've smoked so much fish and pork on this, and venison. So you're the one that keeps on getting out and buggering up my garden, aren't you? Hey, what's the story? Yeah, you. I really don't want you coming up on the deck, Super Duck. You shit all over it, yes you do. What's that chicken doing behind you, hey? That needs to go back in the house. <laughs> yeah, move along, come on. Yeah, it's a bit of a patch, show you'll love you, but hey. And you, what are you doing out here, eh? Sit down, sit down, I'll take you back, all right, let me get you. How about that, one-handed? Yeah, you know what you want to do, you want to wreck my garden. What are you guys up to? Hey, what's going on? You're following me, you're following me. Hey, I'll sing a song. I met a pretty little hen, I kissed her once, and I kissed her again. I said, won't you be my wife? She replied. I'll be yours and I'll be true and I'll lay lots of eggs for you. I'll be yours for the rest of your life. It's a song that a rooster sung to a hen. Yeah, look, there's some feet in here, guys. You don't actually need me to, to pass it out to you, I will, but it actually works quite good if you stand on that and you can get your head in there, okay? You know that. Yeah, turn it up. You don't want to come in here, mate. No, you don't. You're a free duck. Enjoy your freedom. Yeah, I know what you want. You want some slugs, don't you? Look under here, buddy. Look, under here. There we go. Look under there. There's all sorts of goodies. Turn into and worms. Get your laughing gear into that. Yeah, now you're talking, aren't you? Yeah. You love them. Make short work of them. Hmm. She hangs around me because she knows it'll pick stuff up. I did it when she was a wee baby. Yeah. That's a good feed, isn't it? You know, mate, if you're a bit faster, you might get in there. But no, no beating Super Duck. The size of her, she just gets bigger every day. Don't you? She's getting huge. Hey, duck, duck, duck. You with that, eh? Hey, hey, you like that? She's lovely to patch, she's real, like, soft. Yeah, you're fat ass. I hate to say it, but you'd be bloody good in the pot. Yeah. Nah, I wouldn't do that, mate. Nah, 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 I wouldn't do that. It's okay. Nah, I didn't say that. Nah, nah, it's okay. Nah, you didn't, you didn't hear that. You gonna have a drink? You gonna get some, uh, some shitty water to get those worms down with? Mmm, good tucker. Look at these beauties have just popped up in the last couple of days. They're old sort of historical plants that have been here forever. Don't know what they are. I guess they're some sort of lily, but they're beautiful. Damo knocked the skin off this oh, a while ago. I've got to tell them to not leave them in buckets, because there'll be maggots for miles now. Look at them. Anyway, we know some chickens that'll enjoy those. Hey ladies, I've got something you just bloody love. You're going to love this. Turn this into eggs for us, would you? Fuck, it stinks. Oh, jeez. You don't want to come in here, mate. You don't. You don't want to come in. You'd hate it in there with these guys. They'll probably beat you up. You come for a walk, are you? You're not a dog, you're a duck. Stay there. Six dollars at the warehouse on special. I mean, how could you even... You couldn't even buy clay for six dollars. They're probably made in China. How do they make those and send them all the way to New Zealand? The weight of it, I don't get it. Anyway, that's a uh, bargain was too good. So I'm going to plant some uh, herbs in those. This beauty here, as you can see, I've just done a, a pruning and cleaned all the stuff off. Isn't it a cracker? That was on the side of the road on the west coast, not far from Hawker Ticket. They were doing some roadworks, and they were going to, they were smashing all the plants. And I said to the guys in roadworks, can I grab those? And they said, yeah, to help yourself. So I got that nice little plant. It's a beauty, eh? Now these things grow wild behind my house. What are they? They're just beautiful. They're some sort of lily. But you could make them into an indoor plant, I reckon. I reckon you could take those and you could, like, pot them up. All of these seedlings under here, look at them. You could take one of these, just at the back of the house, and you could pot that up. It's beautiful. That'd be nice inside. I'm going to do that. There's heaps. These little guys, they don't even get any sunlight, and they're growing under all these big ones. They'll grow inside the kitchen. When I bought this land here, I inherited a few things that were free. 
One was this old Skoda, which has just fallen to bits, and I've robbed different things off it. I've even grown pot plants in there as a wee glass house, believe it or not. But in here is an old wine room. You see all the bottles and stuff. It's concrete. It's just on the back of the house. I use it for hanging animals. It's cool. But I also inherited this. I mean, what do you reckon it is? I reckon it's an old, uh, I reckon it's an old churn, because you, you turn it. It starts to go. And you give it a turn on this handle here, and that thing keeps on going. Look, it just spins by itself. So it must be a big flywheel on there. And I guess it's this big pot on top is for the cream. Not sure how it worked exactly, but I reckon it's an old churn. What do you guys reckon? It's still going. It goes for ages. It's clever, isn't it? Yeah, the house came with the land. It was considered to be bulldozed material. It cost about twenty-five thousand to take it away which uh, made more sense to rebuild it anyway I'm a bit excited because uh, my daughter Dayla is coming she's been away teaching whitewater kayaking in Canada and she's been to Austria as well she's coming back to stay here with me and she's going to be staying in her tree hut up there and last time I went up there there was bees up there we've taken them all out now or Zach did at least she'll be staying in the tree hut that's pretty cool I'm really looking forward to seeing you. This is a native bush behind my house, and it's where I'm beginning my woody mushrooms from, some of them, and also some down by Murray's place, I found when I was rabbit shooting the other day, and there's also some down on the beach. I'm gonna go and check out and see if there's any in his place still. Just seen a whole covey of quail up Murray's driveway, look at that. California quail, heaps of them. Oh, they're all gone now, they're gone up. There's one male that's staying there while the rest go. That's what they do, he'll stay there to the end. Oh, there's more on the road too. We used to have an American neighbour. He's a very wealthy man, very wealthy. And he used to shoot the quail. Had nothing wrong with shooting them either, but he shot so many, we had hardly any left on the land. And I don't shoot them anymore. I like the wee noise they make. Wow, wow. And they, they don't do any harm to our environment, like a lot of other introduced species. They are nice to eat, and I have eaten them plenty of them. They're running around up here now, back and forth. But I've stopped shooting them on my property, and Alan's gone, the guy that used to shoot them, so uh, they've come back, which is good. There's also one ring neck cock pheasant that's getting around, so I'd like to get a hen and see if uh, they'd mate. I came back here to see if the woodier mushrooms on this log would keep on growing, but they've actually all dried. So they're only small, so I'm gonna actually harvest these guys, because they're not growing anymore. I left them to get bigger, but they haven't. They've done their dash. There's a few, and these here, they actually sort of start to uh, dehydrate on the plant. So you can harvest them just like this. It's quite a lot. Nothing wrong with those. Give them a good boil, good clean, and uh, there'll be a soup. They'll they'll go to a quite a size because they're naturally dehydrated. Well, it's that time that the sun's going down. Well, another hour it'll be gone down or starting to go down. A good time to go for a hunt, so I'm gonna take the rifle, see if I can knock over a hare or a rabbit for our dinner tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys. This is rural life in Tasman, my life. I appreciate you taking the time to make it to the end of the video and follow me. And thanks for following us. I hope your own world's going well. If you're living off the land like I am, or however you're living, how are you doing? We're all just trying to make a living and do the best we can with the lives we've got. We're pretty lucky to, if we're born in a place like New Zealand, that's for sure. Be good, can't be good, be careful, and I'll see you in the next video. It feels like snow's coming, I'm going to go and cover my tomatoes for the night. Because it's, if it gets below oh, 2 degrees, I think, it's, it'll cook your tomatoes with the frost. So you need to put a cover over my tomatoes. See ya!